Hey everyone. Um, we're just going to kind of mess around with some lunchbox today and do kind of a simpler uh, little project today. So let's just jump right into Grasshopper and we're going to play either with cubes or circles. Um, so let's play maybe with circles for now. And if it looks cool, we'll just keep it with circles. I'm going to type in 15 for the circle, give it a radius there. Okay. And from here, we're just going to click, drag, hit, hit uh, Alt to duplicate. I'm just going to bring it out just like that. And I'm going to type in loft. Loft these two circles together. Awesome. And I think we're going to make kind of a gateway or either a circular gateway or a rectangular one, whichever one looks the coolest. Okay, and then from here, I'm just going to use those same circles. We're going to type in extrude. That'll give us an inside surface, an outside surface. Just like that. Plug it into here. Give it a Z vector. Just like so. Okay, we'll give it a number. All right. Awesome. And we'll just type in move. We're just going to move uh, the lofted surface up so we kind of make kind of a donut shape there. Excellent. I'm just going to organize this out just a bit. I have like OCD for not having semi straight lines in there. So, <laughs> um, okay. And then from here, we're just going to use basic uh, lunchbox. Um, you can download it from Food for Rhino. And let's do some random quad randoms. And we're going to do it, uh, let's start off with the extruded surfaces. Okay. Looks like we need to, oop, not the move. We're going to do it on the outsides first. And we need to figure out which one's the UVs. Oop, I'm going to type in 200, because we'll need a lot on the side there. That looks good. So that would be the V. Okay, got the S there. So I'm doing a large number just so we can get uh, these to really flatten out with the randomness there. And I'm just going to type in 10 for the U. And I think it's 10 by default, but maybe we want to mess with that a little later. Awesome stuff. Let's move this out a little bit. And then we're going to extrude each one of those faces out randomly using jitter. Um, we're going to kind of take the easy way out. Um, I'm just going to type in B rep closest point. Okay, we'll type in area for each one of these. We only need to really do it for one of them, I believe. Okay. And then from here, what we'll do is type in amplitude, put it into our normal vector, then we'll set up our jitter. And we need to have a range for the jitter. And we need to construct a domain. And we'll plug the I into the D there. We'll give it two different numbers. Let's just type in five for now. We'll do a larger number up there. So that'll be the range for the jitter. All right. And then we can plug that jitter directly into the amp. Type in extrude. We're going to extrude those faces based on the normal. And this will start generating some geometry for us. Excellent. We need to give it a number two. So uh, we can just type in length, list length, based off of the points there. And that should start to correct that out. Yep. Looks like our number is relatively large. I don't want that many extrusions. So I'm just going to type in, let's just do one. Maybe start to see what that looks like. And maybe a little bit less. Type in three, maybe. And let's do two. It's all a guessing game. So I'm going to type in 0.25 for in there. And just to preview it so we don't have to bake it out every time, I'm going to type in custom preview. We'll just plug the extrusions into there. And then we can go to rendered viewport. 
That's going to be kind of the result there. Looking pretty cool. And then from here, all I'm going to do is just basically take everything. And all we have to do, we don't even need to replace the gear. So we'll just take that down. And we're just going to distribute these all out. Actually, we don't even need to do anything on there either. So we just need to plug it into the jitter again. Oop, not the A. Plug it into the jitter there. Oh, into the vector goes to the normal. The amp goes into the jitter. And we might have to put a negative in there because it looks like it's going on the inside. So we'll just hold Control Shift, pull that out there, bring it back. Looking cool. And we can preview what that's going to look like. If we turn all this off, we can see a little bit better. Looking pretty cool. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring up this extrude so we get a little bit taller. Let's see how far we can go. So there's quite a bit of geometry in there. That's why it's taken a little bit longer. Awesome. So I think that looks pretty good. All right, so that's going to be our first set there. And I think what we'll do is randomly divide all this and then maybe make some lights in there. Um, we'll see. Let's just see. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is on that move face. I'm just going to do the same exact thing there. Okay, and I'm going to lower the number of extrusions on there. Oop, not that many. Or low. Do 158. Let's make these a little bit wider, maybe. I'm trying to break it up into primary and uh, secondary in there. So I'm going to increase the number on our use up top there. Let's do 17, maybe. I'm guessing. We'll just give it a little bit of time. There we go. Much cooler. And basically from here, I'm going to copy and paste these down. And we'll delete out a couple. Technically, I don't even think we need the back loft in there. So let's just see what happens. Okay, these panels go on to here. Wait, and I'm going to reuse these uh, number sliders, just like so. So we're using two jitters. OK, wait for that to load really quick. And from here, I'm just going to delete out that second set. And we'll replace the extrude into our new panels. and. Let's see here, it's probably, rather than working off of the B-Rep normal, we're just going to use the Z-Vector to go up. Plug it into the jitter there. So we should have some geometry uh, relatively quick in area again. Plug it into the list. There we go. Cool. All right, and then I'm going to just lower that down so it's not so hectic in there. That's looking pretty cool already. All right, let's do maybe 125 subdivisions there. Cool. All right, and then from here, like I said, I want to maybe add some lights in here. So let's just merge these two together. We're going to do kind of random lights and type in deconstruct B-Rep. Okay, I'm going to just type in B-Rep so we can bake this out later. All right. So we're going to deconstruct the A set. Might want to flatten this since it's coming from two different lists there. And I'm going to type out list item for the faces. Okay, and I'm just going to click. Okay, so that's our back face. And if you zoom in, we can start to add the different lists. 
there should be six sides if it's a box. So we'll do plus five there. Awesome. And then from here, looks like the top and the bottom, or the inside and the outside uh, surfaces are the first and last in this set. So I'm going to type in join B rep. And we're just going to go through one through four, and that'll be uh, the area in between there. Let's wait for it to load. Excellent. And I'm just going to flatten that just to make sure everything's set there. And then from here, I'm just going to plug the B reps into the first and last. And so that's going to start to create some random lights happening throughout here. And then the outside material, I'm just going to leave it basically as a different material. Awesome. Okay. So I think we're done with the grasshopper portion of this. So what I'm going to do is just start baking. So this, we're going to uh, change the material layer really quick. Okay. Um, we'll just say this is concrete for now. Okay. These. Wait for it to bake. We'll just say this is board form for now, and we'll play around with materials later. Then the lights, wait for it to bake again. I'll just change it to my light layer. Oop, I'm going to select it. Change that out. That's looking pretty cool. Kind of alien-like or something. All right. Just going to flip it up 90 degrees. Looks really cool. Okay. And then I think we'll do, I'm going to do kind of a water thing in the center there, so like a floating thing. I'm going to just type in area centroid. Okay. We'll try to get it in the center there. So from here, what I'm going to do is just Make a sphere. Oop, wrong one. Did I delete out that point? I must have. Eh, I'll do this again. Okay, so I'll just put the point in the exact center. Okay, I'm gonna put a sphere in there. Kind of like the last tutorial, a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna type in bounding box. Pull that down, just like that. We'll, so this is going to be our glass layer. I'm going to uh, change that to glass. Okay, and then I'm just going to copy it really quickly, and we're going to split it in half. Did that not work? Okay, That's kind of a weird split. Okay. And I'm going to copy this, actually. Go back, go to our sphere that's not cut. OK, and we'll paste that out. I'm going to just slightly inset that. And one of these will be our water layer. The second one, we're going to use Lumion's water feature there again. So I'm going to just change this to pool water. And then we'll offset this so we get some nice refraction happening. Offset surface. Oop, not offset sub D. Excellent. Just put in 0.5 inches. I don't know what scale we're working in. Let's change out the glass again. Awesome. Okay. And I believe that the spheres might probably not perfectly centered, so we'll just eyeball it. Bring it out here a little bit. Excellent, excellent. Okay. What I'm going to do from here is just rotate it up again, and we'll put it in the landscape. So I'm just going to, as usual, type in bounding box, try to get some area in there, take the bottom. Big, and 
we'll rebuild it. This one we're going to keep relatively simple. Put it kind of halfway in a cliff, maybe. You guys just kind of do whatever you wish. Hopefully this is going to look cool. Maybe we're kind of looking down on it. What's it looking like rendered in a rendered viewport? rotate this around I'm trying to set up our view a little early I'll just push this over just a bit I think the water layer that we have is completely upside down actually that looks pretty cool too Shoot, I rotated the landscape accidentally. Okay. Rotate this around again. All right. Maybe we'll just scale it all up. I'm going to rotate it the opposite way, actually. So that's going to look really cool. All right, now I'm just going to change the landscape to rock, and we should be all set for Lumion. So that loaded really, really quickly. Um, so uh, let's just play with the materials really quick. So I'm going to make, um, we'll either do it, let's do a kind of a rock face in here, and then we'll add actual rocks to the scene. Um, this outside one, uh, let's go to various again. Maybe we'll do an aged metal. Bring up the scale quite a bit. This might be better. Aged iron. That looks pretty cool. Just, just bring the scale up just a hair. And then the lights. Um, let's see. Or if we could do some sort of glass that's frosted. I don't know if we can do an emissive layer with that, though. Um, let's go to the various again. Age stone, maybe, will work. Bring the colorization up. It's a little bit brighter. Let's go to settings. We'll make it an emissive layer. Still has that nice grit happening. And then let's bring up the weathering. So it is iron. Bring up the weathering quite a bit there. Then these outside ones. Let's do various again. And maybe that's the aged iron. Let's bring up the reflectivity just a bit, bring up the weathering, and map the scale slightly higher. Okay, then this glass looks a little too blue for me, so let's do it. There we go. And then the 
water. Okay, so that's a water. Let's see what waterfall does for it. Much better. Okay, let's bring down the foam, maybe. Wave height will bring it much lower. Wave scale. Okay. Maybe we'll put a sailing boat in here. Wave height will bring that up. So I can see it from the outside. Awesome. This looks a little crazy for me. Water might have been a better than the waterfall. We can always change it later too. Let's do water, wave height, super small. Okay, let's turn down the reflectivity so we can see through it just a bit. Excellent. Okay, hit OK there. Let's add some assets. Like I said, let's put a boat maybe in that thing. I'm kind of scared because I don't know what scale we're working in. Okay, so that's huge. <laughs> okay. I'll rotate it around just a bit so you can just see it. Okay, that's popping out, so we'll have to change that. Just a bit lower. And then I'm going to drag it down so it doesn't look like it's floating. Excellent. Okay, and then as I said, we're going to add some rocks in here, so make it like kind of a crazy landscape. Just like that, we'll add a couple of these arches. Make a couple of these. We could probably paint them in. Oop, too many. Let's go back. There we go. Bring that down. Paint in the underside here, give it some variety. Do the same. Get some smaller ones in there. It's all right if they overlap. It's a rock skate. Get some big ones out in the distance here. Get some more of these flutes happening. What's this one look like? That one's pretty cool. And we'll cover the ground up here. Uh, what else do we want? Get one of those. Just flood the heck out of it. Bring up the density there. It's looking pretty cool. I might delete out a few here just so we can see the corner. not working. Let's manually do it maybe. You can overdo on the rocks. Lesson learned. I think this will be our view or something like this. So let's just put some smaller rocks in there maybe. By smaller, I mean they're a lot. <laughs> awesome. We'll get some through here. And the next thing I am going to change this area in here to grass for now, just so the rocks don't look like they're floating. Yeah, and we'll bring the grass. 
grass size up. Okay, let's go ahead and delete out a few more rocks there. Bring those all around, delete that. And delete this big guy. our view is right in here. What's over here? Mm. We'll just totally delete out all these. See what the best view is going to be for this particular one. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of a few of these. So I want to get this edge condition to really pop. Okay, and then we'll just put smaller ones in the foreground here. They're all relatively big. Yikes. Just a few in here. All right. We'll hit OK really quickly. I'm going to just grab those, make sure they're embedded into the landscape. So we'll just lower them. There we go. It's starting to look cool. And we'll just add some plants everywhere. like that and let's add a person I don't think we need any trees for this particular one we'll add a person on the rocks maybe he's way too big we'll scale him down friend there. Okay, and of course add some birds. And I have to make sure the birds are big enough to see. Okay. So I'm just going to do a cluster of them. All right. Move them over. Try to get them in the foreground here. Bring them higher up. All right. We'll see what the rendering is going to start to look like. So I'm going to just do a realistic. We're going to use a sun. Let's go back, turn off the real skies. Maybe it's kind of a foggy day. Okay. I think our view is right here. Yep. Let's do some camera correction. Two point. Let's really get in there. Play with the sun just a bit. Thank you. 
trying to make it extra moody. So precipitation, maybe we'll take down the particles quantity, but I want to add the extra fog. It's starting to happen in there. Bring up that quantity just a bit. Do a test there. And I think we need some sky. So let's go to FX, we'll go to sky, sky and clouds, uh, master the cloud amount, low clouds, bring those in. The sun's a little bit too bright. Oops. So the lights are starting to look pretty good. I think I want more reflectivity on this face. But overall, the scene's looking good. We should see some more precipitation, probably. Make it look almost... Bring down the size of the particles. I think the birds are a little bit too big, but it's good overall. I'm going to try to center this out just a hair more. Let's play with the sun one more time. Let's give that. What happens if we mess with the focal length there? I kind of like that more. We'll save a minute. Let's change some materials up real quick. Okay, we're gonna make this super reflective. Oh, it is already. Well, we'll try to do our best to make them even more. Birds, we need to scale those down. Sorry if you guys hear the background noise. I get it's nice here in Chicago, so got to keep the windows open. Okay. Scale those all down quite a bit. All right, let's see what a render looks like here. I think that's it. So let's give it a render here. What do we had? 72. So we might move the people uh, just so we can see them a little bit better over, but it's looking really great. All right, uh, let's move them. Just move them to a different rock. Okay, and I am just curious. I want to see what the waterfall looks like potentially on this. Waterfall. See what that renders out like. Water looks bad, or waterfall looks bad. Okay, we'll change that really quickly. That's great. Okay. So we'll render this out and we'll
All right, so it rendered out pretty nicely. Um, what I'm gonna do is just use the, the dodge tool to um, dodge and burn just to lighten up some areas. So just holding Alt and just clicking around. So we kind of pop out the greens a little bit just in the foreground there. And then overall, we can just kind of pass it by, brighten up some of the rocks there. And I'm just gonna touch on some of the lights so we highlight kind of the shadows revolving around it. And then we'll kind of bump out that water space just a bit. Again, just some of the light levels in there, we'll just pop them. Okay, looking pretty cool. Kind of this alien-like kind of thing in here. All right. All right, and then as usual, we'll just do a vignetting around the top and bottom there. And uh, I think we'll be finished. So thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you like this. Um, please subscribe and follow Instagram and YouTube. I'm trying to get more and more following. Um, these are really fun to do, and apologies for not being super consistent, but uh, lots of stuff going on, especially with the weather getting nicer. So. Uh, again, thanks for following, um, and definitely tag me in your post once you make stuff. I really enjoy looking at all your all's work, um, and uh, have a great day. We'll talk soon.